And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up, rise up, rise up. Good evening, everybody, and welcome once again to the Midnight Ride. My name is David Carey Cole, and it is my great honor to welcome you once again into the Puritan Barn for the Midnight Ride. Tonight, it's going to be a classic Midnight Ride, 70 Shepherds in the Book of Enoch. I have been studying Bible prophecy for several decades, and this is one of the most amazing pieces of Bible prophecy I have ever examined. So get ready, play close attention, but the ride starts right now because we are now live, live, live. What's up, everybody from all over the world? You guys tell me where you're from in the chat. We always love to see that and love to see that on the comments if you're not watching it live. I uh, hope you guys are doing good. And I know you guys could choose anything you wanted to to listen to, but you're but you're choosing to invest your time listening to this. And this is one of those topics that if you're not interested in it, we're not the same kind of person. That's for sure, David. How are you today? Well, I'm just fantastic. Everything is just great. Things are rocking at the barn and everything is just tickety boo. Loving it. For sure, man. Everything is just really, uh, God has really just got his hand on the situation. In good times and bad, you just see it. You oh, know, yeah. you can see it and it's oh, always yeah. amazing. I'm sure everybody out there can relate, hopefully as well. So. Yeah. But tonight's show, like you guys said, is like you said, a 70 shepherds of the book of Enoch. What a fantastic uh, topic. I don't even know what all David's going to say. I know I put together the slides and I saw all this evidence that points to something amazing and crazy at the same time. And I'm excited to really to hear this. But before we get started, I want to say thank you to our sponsors. Uh, we have Cascadia Cutlery. Man, this guy has the best knives survival pack type backpacks like a like a what are they called the uh bug out bags uh he's got a midnight ride package on there and somebody bought the one they had last week out but i don't know if it's the same one hopefully it's one of the similar one. it was pretty awesome i don't know what this one week is but it's pretty awesome but they do a good job they have cutting edge package and truth radio packages he's got his own packages and just pretty much any kind of knives you can think of custom made and of course some of the best knives in the world from benchmade and other companies like that. And we also want to thank Joshua Watts Leather Company, which is our um, favorite leather guy. Obviously, he's been uh, a sponsor for the Midnight Ride for a long time now. And so he's done a good work for a lot of you guys. We thank him if you need any kind of custom leather done on for your book covers, which is some of the stuff that we got is just, you know, book cover stuff where you can, you know, makes you look like you got this book from the Vatican. You know, it's 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 a. Uh, it's pretty cool. So he can do that, and he can do gun holsters, anything you want, right? David, it's pretty cool. That is absolutely right. And so uh, tonight we're doing a special show. Like David said, we're doing this on – it's going to be about the in the Book of Enoch, which is a major portion of it. And we are doing a Book of Enoch video commentary. And so we wanted to offer you guys who don't have a membership yet or maybe couldn't afford one, but you want to try this out your first month free – for nystv.org you can do this coupon code there's other coupon codes out there from other people you can do as well but uh if you have you know if you haven't got a chance to check it out this is a good chance and the coupon code david tell us what the coupon code is tickety boo there we go tickety boo david, tickety get, boo coupon code get us started guys get us started david let's do this all right 70 shepherds in the book of enoch we're going to begin in enoch chapter 90, and we're going to read verses 20 through 26. And I saw till a throne was erected in the pleasant land, and the Lord of the sheep sat himself thereon, and the other took the sealed books and opened those books before the Lord of the sheep. 
Now, this text opens with the return of the Lord to glory, and this is the same as Matthew 25, 31, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And there are some specific glimpses into the last judgment of the angelic realm that is tremendously insightful here. In verse 21, and the Lord called those men, the first seven white ones, and commanded that they should bring before him with the first star which led the way all the stars whose privy members were like those of horses, and they brought them all before him. Now these are the 200 that came down on Mount Hermon that committed the sin in the Genesis 6 scenario. They were bound in Tartarus, and they will be judged. And at, in the last day, they've been bound and chained in Tartarus, and then they're going to be cast into the lake of fire. Now, we have several things in view here, and we want to go slowly and keep this sorted. Now, in verse 22, And he said to that man who wrote before him, being one of those seven white ones, and said unto him, Take those seventy shepherds, to whom I delivered the sheep, and who, taking them of their own authority, slew more than I commanded them. Now, this is another group. We have the 200 and we have the 70. These are both groups of angelic powers, and we're going to be explaining this, and we're going to see that there are 70 angelic shepherds, and there and well there's 70 good angelic shepherds there are 70 bad angelic shepherds and there are 70 earthly shepherds upon the earth and this is what is in view here and in uh in verse 28 it says and behold they were all bound and i saw they all stood before him and the judgment was held first over the stars and they were judged and found guilty and went to the place of condemnation and they were cast into an abyss full of fire and flaming and full of pillars of fire and those 70 shepherds were judged and found guilty and they were cast into that fiery abyss and i saw at that time how a like abyss was opened in the midst of the earth full of fire and they brought those blinded sheep and they were all judged and found guilty and cast into this fiery abyss and they burned now this abyss was to the right of that house. And we're going to see what happens to the blinded sheep that follow false shepherds, and it's not a very pretty story. And we're going to unpack this, and we're going to identify these groups so we can expound on this and come to some profound conclusions. Now, there we go. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32 and verse 8, it says, when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. And the Lord called the nation of Israel to be a light to the nations. And they didn't do a very good job with that. They brought judgment on themselves. And you know how that story wound up. But the nations were divided according to the nation of Israel. And we're going to see that the Lord appointed an angel over every nation to bring them into the truth and to be a blessing and a guide to them. Now, in Genesis chapter 10 and verse 1, in the table of nations, now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and unto them were the sons born after the flood. And in the table of nations, there are 70 nations, 70 nations. And in uh, Ecclesiasticus 17 and 7, for in the division of the nations of the whole earth, he sat a ruler over every people, but Israel is the Lord's portion. So we see the Lord dividing the earth into 70 nations according to 
in, in proportion to the nation of Israel, it was their job to be a light to the nations, and the Lord set a heavenly ruler over every nation. That is 70. Now, the best way to understand the kingdom of the evil one, Jesus in Matthew 12 said, you know, if Satan's kingdom is divided against itself, it cannot stand. There is a kingdom with a pecking order and a hierarchy in the kingdom of darkness. And the more we understand about that, we can be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove, and we can pray specific prayers, and we can get specific answers. And Satan is the imitator. And when the Lord set 70 good angels over the 70 nations, Satan set up 70 fallen angels to oppose the work of God. And we're going to see the good 70, bad 70 play out uh, a lot in this study this evening. Now, in Enoch chapter 6 and verse 6, we saw those addressed in the 90th chapter of the book of Enoch, um, where it very vividly described them. It says, and they were in all 200 who descended in the days of Jared, on the summit of Mount Hermon, and they called it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. So we have the 200, and the 200 were bound in Tartarus, and then they're brought out and judged with the 70. So we got two groups. We got the 200, we have the 70, and of the 70 angelic shepherds, there are 70 earthly shepherds that were empowered by the 70 heavenly shepherds, which are the counterpart to the good 70 angels the Lord set over the nations. Now, we're going to play good 70, bad 70, and we're going to see some amazing things. Now, in the text in 2 Peter 2 and 4, this is the scripture, for if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell or Tartarus and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved under the judgment. And that's what we see in Enoch 90. These guys coming out and getting their final resting place in the lake of fire. And with them, we see these 70. And that's going to be our, our focus of these 70 shepherds in the prophecy of Enoch, which is just nothing less than amazing. Now, in the text in Enoch chapter 90 in verse 5, it says, And I saw until that 23 had undertaken the pasturing and completed in their several periods 58 times. There were 58 specific times when specific shepherds ruled over Israel. Now, we're going to look and see if we can find 58 shepherds in Israel. Now, in the book of Joshua, chapter 5, it says, And it came to pass, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the Lord, of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereupon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. Joshua was the first shepherd that took the children of Israel into the land of Canaan. And as we see from this text, he had a little bit of angelic assistance, didn't he? So when we are walking in obedience to the Lord, and I like to say radical obedience will bring radical blessing, and you can feel that supernatural help. And when that supernatural help begins to come in to make things work that you know you just don't see how they are, that's when you know you're getting a little help from the sanctuary. Now, John, you want to say anything? Just jump in. Dude, I don't want to say anything. I really just want to listen to what you have here because this is just really interesting. And and uh, I would say to anybody listening right now, you know, forget what you think you know and just listen for a minute. Listen to a man that's been studying the Bible for 30 years. Uh, there's a lot of people that want to, you know, 
know everything and all this different stuff, sometimes it's good to just listen. That's what I'm doing. I feel like I'm learning a lot. I've learned a lot my whole life, but there's times when you just got to listen. And now's yeah. one of them times. So I'm listening. Enoch 90 and 5 said there were 58 periods. Now we're going to look for 58 shepherds. We're going to see if we can find 58 shepherds for 58 periods. And uh, Joshua, we got Joshua. Now, this is a slide here of the judges of Israel. And after Joshua brought the children of Israel into the promised land, there were 15 judges. So we have 15 judges plus Joshua. That's 16. And then we go on down and we find here the kings of Israel. And here's a list of the kings of Israel, and we have 23 kings of Israel. And then we can go on down to this next slide, and this are the kings of Judah. And we have 19 kings of Judah. Now, I took my shoes off, and I had to use my toes on this one, but I added up Joshua's one. The judges are 15, 23 kings of Israel, and 19 kings of Judah. That is 58, exactly 58 shepherds in 58 periods, just like the 90th chapter of Enoch said. Now, in the book of Enoch, it was the 70 shepherds that were cast in. Now, everything here is in a numerical structure. And it's, you know, how, how if the book of Enoch is credible, and I believe it is, this is probably just an amazing prophecy. You can't make this stuff up. And that there was exactly 58, it, to me, is very, very amazing. Now, let's see if we can go from 58 to the 70. And let's see how we get that. And there's a transition from the 58 to the 70. And when that happens, we see the judgment of God fall. Now, this is a list of the 12 kings of the Hasmonean dynasty. In other words, these were the Maccabeans, the rulers in the times of the Maccabees. And we have, count them, we have 12 here. You add 58 to 12, you get 70. Now, there's we're going to see two amazing sequences of the 70. Now, when you take the 58, adding Joshua to the judges and the kings of Israel and the kings of Judah, you add the 12 Maccabean rulers and you have 70. And what happened after the 70 was reached and the cycle, there was the 58 seasons, uh, the periods of the shepherds, and when it reached 70, what happened? Matthew 24, 1 and 2, and Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to shew him the building of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And this prophecy was fulfilled in 70 AD. Wow. You can't make this up. Wow. So we've got the 58, Joshua, plus the judges, the kings of Israel, the kings of Judah, plus the 12 Maccabeans, that 70, Judgment fell in 70 A.D. You know, I'm going to show the show the charts one more time here okay. for anybody that you wants go right to ahead, see them. Yeah. You can always screenshot this and see. But here's the first set of kings going from, I believe, 1397 to 1024. And then you have the kings uh, from Saul all the way to Hosea. Uh, that's 23 kings. And then you have the uh, kings of Judah which are 19 from Rehoboam to Zedekiah. And most people don't realize this, but Judah and Israel were two different kingdoms for a while split, but they were, they were, they still continued. Judah did after Israel was in captivity for a while. Uh, then you have the 12 Kings of the Hasmonean dynasty. And so, uh, these are all verifiable. David told me to try my best to see if I could disprove this and I couldn't do it. So there you go. I looked, I tried, I had to put these slides together. These are exactly how many rulers there were before 70 AD when it was sacked. So 
pretty amazing. I mean, it, crazy, really. Yeah, amazing. I mean that there. The, how could this in any way be a coincidence? Yeah, I mean, it, it just can't be. It just can't be. And this has to be one of the ama most amazing prophecies I've ever seen. But we're just getting started. Yep. We are just getting started. Yep. And um, let's look at uh, Jeremiah 29 and 10. For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you in causing you to return to this place. 70 years captivity in Babylon. And in Daniel chapter 9 and verse 2, Daniel came along and he said, In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books, the book of Jeremiah, the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. And the Lord has chosen the number 70 in relating to Jerusalem. And it's amazing. God is a God of patterns. You can look um, at a leaf and you can understand our creator is a God of, of patterns. It's amazing. And this just blows my mind. It's beyond the possibility in my mind of anything coincidental. And then in Daniel 9, 24, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Then in Daniel 9.27, and I'm going to give you a very truncated version of the 70 weeks, and in Daniel 9.27, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Or in other words, these are a week of years. It means a week of of years or seven years and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease jesus did this when he died upon the cross after three and one half years of ministry and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate even until the consummation. That's why I don't look for anything to be built, any rebuilt temple on the Temple Mount. It's going to be desolate under the consummation. That mosque on the Temple Mount is the sign of the judgment of God. It says, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Now, that we have a th the 70th week of Daniel divided in two by the death of Christ, a three and a half minute year ministry when Jesus confirmed the covenant, and he will again, and confirm the covenant for three and a half years in the last half of the 70th week of Daniel. We see this in the book of Revelation as 42 months, 1,260 days, or a times time and a half time. These are all describing this same three and a half year period, which will be cut short, or the last half of the 70th week of Daniel. Now, after the first 70th week of Daniel was concluded, the judgment of God fell on Jerusalem. And there will be another judgment, and this happened when the 58 joined with the 12, the number 70 was completed. God's time has elapsed in the fullness of time. God sent his son, made of a woman, made under the law, Galatians 4 and 4. Christ died for her sins. The sacrifice and the oblation ceased. Then the judgment fell in 70 AD upon Jerusalem. Now, in the last half of the 70th week of Daniel, this entire cycle is going to be repeated. And once again, we're going to see the judgment of God fall on Jerusalem. And it all falls into the pattern of the 70. Now, Genesis, we're going to play good 70, bad 70. Now, Genesis 10 and 1, we read it a moment ago. Now, these are the generations of Noah. Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and unto them sons were born after the flood. There were 70 nations in the table of nations, and we saw in Ecclesiasticus 17.17 17, that the Lord set a heavenly ruler over each one, and of course Satan had to imitate it. Good 70, bad 70. In Exodus chapter 1 and verse 5, 
and all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were seventy souls, for Joseph was in Egypt already. The number of the Israel of God is seventy. There were seventy souls that came out of the loins of Jacob to form the nation of Israel and the Israel of God. In Exodus 24, now get ready to wave bye-bye to the Talmud and the Oral Torah. It says in Exodus 24, 1 through 4, And he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord, thou, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. You see, that God is a God of patterns. Seventy nations, seventy elders, everything is in structure, and Satan will try to imitate it and make you think what he's doing is the real kingdom of God. It says, And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. And Moses came and told the people, all the words of the Lord, and all the judgments, and all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord has said we will do. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord. So the supposed theory that there's an oral Torah which written down is the Talmud and the Kabbalah, this is just a big porky, so just wave bye-bye to the oral Torah and the Talmud and the Kabbalah. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and builded an altar under the hill and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Good 70. Everything is based numerically. Numbers 11, 24 and verse 25. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and set them around about the tabernacle. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him and took the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the seventy elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. This seventy was the elders of the true Israel of God. And we're going to see Jesus uh, become the continuation of this in the Israel of God. We're going to see it. So we got the number 70, undeniably the foundation of the Israel of God. Now, and also the number 70 in dealing with the Holy, Jeru with Jerusalem and the Holy People. Now, let's play bad 70 a little bit. Ezekiel chapter 8 and verse 11. And like we say, everything, if we understand Satan, he's the great imitator. Whatever God does, he'll try to imitate it and make you, make you think that he is the original and the true. And that's what he does. Now, in Ezekiel 8 and 11, and there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jazaniah, the son of Shaphan, with every man and his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. In Ezekiel chapter 8, the prophet is shown by the Lord. There's a hole dug in the wall, and the Lord reveals unto him all the abominations. Now, these guys were telling the people religion was booming. I tell you, the temple was doing booming business, and the these men were the most respected religious leaders in the land, but the Lord revealed to Ezekiel that they were nothing but a bunch of pagan idolaters. And the judgment of God fell on Israel, 586 B.C., because of these 70 men. Now, 2 Kings chapter 10 and verse 1. And this plays out in a bloodline. This is a bloodline war. And this is, it's in the, in the heavenlies. There's a good 70 and a bad 70 in opposition in the heavenly realm, and there is a bloodline at war. We're going to see the number 70 that is even today in operation in the Israel of God, and it's a bloodline clash. 
And we see it here in 2 Kings 10 and 1, coming down to the time of Jahab and Jezebel, Jezebel, when they introduced the worship of the goddess into Israel, and they persecuted the prophets of God and Elisha, and then when Obadiah fed the prophets in a cave, um, Obadiah was a prepper. Now, in 2 Kings 10 and 1, and Ahab had 70 sons in Samaria. And Jehu wrote letters and sent to Samaria unto the rulers of Jezreel, to the elders, and to them that brought up Ahab's children, saying... Oh, I didn't get the rest of that here. I'll pull it up. Sorry about that, David. Oh, that's okay. Second Kings 10 and 1. Well, let's just... Let's see. Here, I'm okay, up. that's all. I think... Wait a minute. Yeah, I think we can pick it up here in verse 6 through 9 and make sense of it. Okay, yeah, because I, I, I think that that's all it really says after that. Yeah. In verse 2 it says, Now as soon as the letter cometh to you, seeing your master's sons are with you, and they are with your chariots and horses and fence cities, also in armor. So that's all it says. But you're, the whole point of that is the 70 sons there, right? Yeah. yeah. Now let's pick it up in uh, the sixth verse. Then he wrote a letter the second time to them, saying, If ye be mine... And if ye will hearken unto my voice, take ye the heads of those men of your master's house and come to me to Jezreel by, this, by tomorrow this time. Now the king's son, being seventy persons, were with the great men of the city which brought them up. And it came to pass when the letter came to them that they took the king's sons and slew 70 persons and put their heads in baskets and sent them to Jezreel. And there came a messenger and told him, saying, They have brought the heads of the king's sons. And he said, Lay ye them in two heaps at the entering end of the gate until the morning. And it came to pass in the morning that he went out and stood and said to all the people, Ye be righteous. Behold, I conspired against my master and slew him, but who slew all these? And we see here that this is a very, very serious conflict. It plays out in the heavenly realm between the good 70 and the bad 70. It plays out between the true elders of Israel and the 70 ancients that have apostatized. It plays out between the true Israel of God and the prophets and the 70 sons of Ahab. It's the good 70, bad 70. And everything... In God's sovereignty, he has chosen to work out in the realm and the understanding of this 70. And he can do that because he is the big guy. Now, in Luke chapter 10 and verse 1, here we see Jesus as the head of the entire Israel of God, and he sets things in order systematically just like Moses. In Luke chapter 10 and verse 1, and after these things, the Lord appointed other seventy also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. And in verse 17, And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And if you look over at Revelation chapter 9, when the abyss is opened, we have these chimera devil-looking creatures come out, with the sting of scorpions that tormented people five months. And the seal, they could not touch the people that had the seal of God. In Genesis, it says that the waters of the flood were upon the earth for exactly five months. And God supernaturally preserved God's people in the ark for five months. Likewise, in the end of time, we will be protected by the seal of God when the abyss is opened, and these creatures will not be able to harm those with the seal of God. And this is the promise unto the 70. We want to be on the good 70, not the bad 70. And this is, this is going to play out 
right until the Lord returns and we're going to see it fulfilled in the prophecy as was outlined in the book of Enoch. This is a picture of the Zondervan Pictorial Encyclopedia and I have an article here that I want to read some from. I'll just move my mic here so I can get it all in here, but this is the article here about the Sanhedrin. And when Jesus sent his 70 out, that was the good 70, and Satan raised up the Sanhedrin to directly oppose him. And this is just a little information about the Sanhedrin from this article from the Zondervan Pictorial Encyclopedia. There are a number of indicators that among the Jews, councils of 70 were favored. The extra man was apparently the leader or president of the Sanhedrin, which according to the evidence of Josephus and the New Testament was the high priest. In Josephus Antiquities 29 and 1, who provides an account of the Sanhedrin's trial and stoning of James, the brother of Jesus, as well as some other Christians. In the New Testament itself, there is the account of the trial and stoning of Stephen by the Sanhedrin, Acts 6, 9 through 8 and 1. Long before his arrest and trial, they had determined to have Jesus put to death, Matthew 12, 14, Mark 3, 6, John 11, 53. It was only a question of how to do this and under what charges to hand him over to the Romans for the capital punishment. They themselves could not legally administer. So they don't have a very good track record, and we see how this 70 directly opposed the work of God. They killed James, the Lord's brother, other Christians. They were there putting Stephen to death. They put Jesus to death. This 70 was directly opposing Jesus and the good 70. Good 70, bad 70, still playing out. Now, on October 2004, in Tiberias, the Sanhedrin was reestablished according to the proposal of Maimonides. Now, a lot of people love the Sanhedrin. There are people that say they're Christians. They're going to send money to the Sanhedrin so they can rebuild the temple. You know, uh, I don't know uh, what makes these people tick. I really don't. And Maimonides... If you remember, we've talked about this before. He was the one that said that the Sanhedrin had to be reestablished. He is also the one that wrote about the Noahide laws. Now, there are lots of bright lights out there that are telling you that you don't have anything to worry about the Noahide laws. Now, let's just look at a few scriptures. But beware of men for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in the synagogues. Now, I wonder who it is that's going to scourge people in the synagogues. Probably those doggone Presbyterians, isn't it? Now, we're gonna, let's look at Mark 13, 8 through 9, and I think I want to even add a, a scripture. I missed a scripture, too. Uh, Matthew 23, 34. Wherefore, behold... I send unto you prophets, and wise men, and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogues, and persecute them from city to city. In the Gospel of John, in the Gospel of John, in chapter 16, in verses 1 through 3, and by the way, Maimonides when he wrote the Noahide Laws, the same guy that said the Sanhedrin had to be reconvened, it is in the Noahide Laws that Christians will be put to death for idolatry. And we have these bright lights of, I could name names of these guys that are saying, don't worry about it. Well, I think maybe we're not going to worry about it, but maybe we need to be aware of it. In John chapter 16, Jesus said, These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he 
doeth God service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. And we want to read this other text in Mark chapter 13, and this sets it in an undeniable prophetic context. And I see this all coming together in the final ride of the 70 shepherds. Now, in Mark chapter 13, and I want to read verse 8, 9, and 10. It says, For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows, but take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils and in the synagogues. And you see, they'll talk about the birth pangs, won't they? But when it talks about the synagogues that, well, you better watch out, you know, they're going to be doing some bad stuff in the synagogues to you, but take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to the councils and the synagogues. You shall be beaten, and you shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them, and the gospel must first be published among all nations. And this is undeniably in a prophetic teaching that is parallel unto that that was given in the 24th chapter of Matthew and in Luke chapter 21. And I think I want to add a little on to this one too here. Uh, in Enoch chapter 90 and verse 27, and I want to add verse 26 to it here. And this is just a sober warning. It seems like today people have the idea that they can support apostate teachers, apostate ministries, and go to apostate churches, and it's just okay. Like, there'll be no payday. Oh, it ain't me, it's them. I don't agree with everything, but I just go here. Well, if you are going there, you're supporting it, and you're going to be held accountable for what you support. Now, let's see the description of what happens to these blinded sheep that are going to be judged right along with these 70 shepherds. In Enoch chapter 90 and verse 26, and I saw at that time how like uh, how a like abyss was opened in the midst of the earth, full of fire, and they brought those blinded sheep, and they were all judged and found guilty and cast into this fiery abyss, and they burned. Now this abyss was to the right of that house, and I saw those sheep burning and their bones burning. Now, this is the picture we have in the book of Enoch. These 70 false shepherds are going to come up. The, the, the angels, the earthly false shepherds, they're going to go in the fire, and then the blinded sheep that follow them, there's going to be a special little uh, fire pit for them, you see. It's not good to be a blinded sheep. If you're a real sheep, you will follow the real shepherd. A real child of God will be repulsed at idolatry. A false child of God will thrive on idolatry and love it. There's a big difference, and it's time for the sheep to pay heed. And if you're a sheep, it's time to follow the real shepherd and not these false shepherds because it's going to be one way or the other. Hmm. Now, we saw that there were 58 shepherds in Israel. Joshua, 15 judges, the kings of Judah and Israel being 58. We add that to the 12 Maccabean rulers. We come to 70. Judgment fell on the nation of Israel. Now let's bring it forward. Now let's take the same 58. We've got the 58 ancient shepherds of Israel, Joshua, the judges, the kings of Israel and Judah. Now would someone like to guess since Israel become a nation in 1948, would anyone like to venture a guess how many prime ministers there's been? Twelve. When the twelve Maccabean rulers were added to the 58, judgment fell on Jerusalem. And here on this slide, these are the twelve prime ministers that have been in Israel right down to the present. Benjamin Netanyahu is the 12th. Is this just all a silly coincidence, or could this prophecy 
be telling us that we are very near the time when Jerusalem is going to be judged again. And from myself looking at this, and, you know, and I told John, I said, please find something wrong with this. But, I mean, this is tight. This is real tight. And this has taken place over thousands of years. And these numbers have held consistent. And I cannot dismiss this as just a coincidence. Yeah, I mean, it's, this is really interesting. If this, if this is, if what you got here is something, then this is super significant. For the time we're living in right now, because if Benjamin Netanyahu equals that 70, um, uh, it's sobering to think about that it's possibly, this is possibly, I mean, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I'm speechless, really, when I look at it, because, I mean, if if this is the correct thing, then that Benjamin Netanyahu is the last, last shepherd of Israel. Yeah, if, and if um, I don't know. I, I just have a hard time dismissing this as coincidence. Now, um, and you know, everything else, we've talked about all kinds of things of uh, that have pointed toward being in the last days before the return of Christ, and this could be one of the very most profound. And uh, as I go over this and study it, I see a pattern here that is absolutely amazing that at, you know, I just believe that we're on the verge of, of uh, the judgment of Jerusalem once again. Now, let's look at that in Scripture, and let's see what that's going to look like. Uh, let's go to the book of Isaiah, and let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 17, and verse 1. And this is going to be the event that is going to kick off the last half of the 70th week of Daniel. In Isaiah chapter 17 and verse 1, it says, the burden of Damascus, behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. In verse 3, it says, the fortress also shall cease from Ephraim, and the kingdom from Damascus, and the remnant of Syria, they shall be as the glory of the children of Israel, saith the Lord of hosts. In that day it shall come to pass that the glory of Jacob shall be made thin, and the fatness of his flesh shall wax lean. And at the same time, Damascus is taken away from being a city. There's going to be a tremendous judgment that will take place on Israel. This is, And I believe we've connected this before with the war in uh, Daniel chapter 11, and we've cross-referenced this uh, recently with uh, the chapter in the book of Enoch and also with Second Estrus, and it just, fits, uh, it just fits like a glove. Now let's look what Jesus said in Luke chapter 21, and let's look at the 21st chapter of Luke, and let's begin in verse 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter in therein too. For these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. So when we see this Daniel 11 war, Isaiah 17, when we see Jerusalem encompassed with armies, we know that this will be the time when all things will be fulfilled, and this will be the kickoff of the last half of the 70th week of Daniel. And we're going to see the judgment on Jerusalem again, in the, when the when the times of the 70 is fulfilled and it's all tied to the 70th week, there's 70 just all over it. And I, you know, I'd be good with something being wrong with this. I'd be good with, well, maybe the book of Enoch, it's, well, it's not in the Bible. Maybe something's off. I don't know. But I know that this is something that with everything else we see, I think it's something that we might want to very prayerfully consider. And it says in the book of Zechariah, let's go back, and the Bible's very specific about the way that the judgment on Jerusalem is going to play out on the last day. 
In Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 2, it says, Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about, when they shall be in siege both against Judah and Jerusalem. And truly, Jerusalem will be a cup of trembling to the entire earth when this final invasion, Jesus said, when you see Jerusalem surrounded with armies, these are the days of vengeance when all things will be fulfilled. And down in, uh, in chapter 13, verse 8 and 9, it says exactly what's going to happen. It says, And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. Two-thirds of everyone in Israel at this time is going to die. It's going to be a horrific, massive loss of life. But the third shall be left therein, and I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried, and they shall call on my name, and I will hear them, and I will say, It is my people, and they shall say, The Lord is my God. And this will be a genuine repentance of the people in Israel. In Second Estrus 13, it gives more detail on this, and it talks about those that are left behind in the land of the ten tribes that will repent at this time. And this is the only thing I have ever found in Scripture about a real repentance among the 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 Hebrew people, and it will happen very near the end when there's a final run on Jerusalem, and it will be a genuine repentance. In Zechariah 12, it says in verse 9, and it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem, and I will pour out upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and the spirit of supplications, and they shall look upon me whom they had pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn son, and in that day there shall be a great mourning in Jerusalem, and a real repentance and a turning, and this will be very near the end of the second half of the, the, of the last half of the 70th week of Daniel. Now, John, you had something you want to say? Well, yeah, I was just going to say, like, you know, you look at what's going on in Israel, like right now as we speak, you have this green pass thing that's going on, that is basically they are being the guinea pigs for all of this stuff, right? They're the, not not for so much for the um, the shot itself, but for the forced pass, if you will, pass that they call it. they got the green pass to get into any place in public, you know, kind of forcing that down on yeah. their people and kind of treating them like, you know, basically like they're in Auschwitz again, almost to a certain extent, you know, having them wear the, they got to wear the scarlet this. They're the first nation to do that. You also have this uh, this guy, and I'm not sure how to pronounce his first name, but Jesse, Jesse Ahu Ben David, and they are uh, people, the rabbis are following this guy around all over the place. And I, I saw this video where he's kind of just sitting there at the Wailing Wall, and he's sitting there like this, David, just sitting there kind of hand perched and all of these rabbis are coming up and uh, just overwhelmed wanting to hear what he says about the word. They're putting the Bible and they're putting the Torah in his mouth and his hand, like in his face. And he's telling them things in their ears. And they're all like, it's super, super excited just to see him large amounts of people following him. And they're, they believe this guy's the Messiah. A lot of people yeah. in the Sanhedrin and, and people like that, this is going on right now. You can look this guy up. His name is Jizayahu Ben David, and, and I'm not sure how you pronounce this. J I Z I A H U Ben David. So, son of David. Jizayahu, son of David. So, uh, interesting um, guy here. I don't know exactly what's all going on. I haven't been able to find tons of information, but I've seen plenty of footage of people following him around and, and, and rumors that he is the messiah from them you know and and we did a show on the book of enoch david um chapter 46 we just posted that one on the on the website yeah and we talked about how to positively discern between the antichrist and the messiah and i think that's an important thing to decipher because yeah. if people can decipher that then they can decipher they won't be deceived by uh, this antichrist is coming because a lot of people are going to be deceived a lot of people oh, already yeah. are oh, but yeah. when you say repentance in israel 
I see uh, they're getting ready to get hit so hard with stuff that there's people starting to wake up. Like, you know, I yeah. remember I had that one guy, he was, and I don't want to give his name. Well, I'm going to give his name. He, Radio in Israel, he owns a company called Radio in Israel in, in uh, Israel. And he used to listen to our show, but I did the show one time about uh, Babylon, about um, Jerusalem being Babylon. And he took it, took it like I was trying to be, uh, I guess, uh, what is it called? Anti-Semitic. Yeah. He took it, it took it as that. And then a year or two later, just recently, a few months ago, he emails me and apologizes, uh, because of what's going on right now. And he made a video that went viral recently about this green, uh, passport yeah. and talked about these things. And they're starting to see, they're starting yeah. to say, cause every, usually it's like rose colored glasses, everything in Israel yeah. just, woo, it has to be amazing. It's in, it's in the Holy land. It has to be good. You know? They had the rose color glasses. A lot of people do, and and I love the Jewish people just as much as I, yeah, I love the amazing. white people, the black. Yeah. You know, I don't. I, to me, they're great people, and they're very successful people. Really good at a lot of things they do. God's really blessed them in a lot of ways, right? Uh, oh, but yeah. but at the same token, they have something going on that's uh, messed up the whole well. I mean, there's something yeah. wrong, and so they're starting to see it. I really believe that they're start. Some of them are starting to see it. Yeah, and. In the words of um, Alfred Edersheim that I have referred to repeatedly, he said, and this was a man that was Jewish to the bone, uh, he converted to Christ, and his father was the leading Jewish scholar in his day at the University of Jerusalem, and he said that the Messiah of Judaism is the Antichrist of the Scriptures. Mm. And he was absolutely right about that. And from what we've studied and the things we brought forth on the Midnight Ride about Israel, it's not surprising that they're leading the way in this technology. Uh, it's not surprising at all. And it's not surprising at all when we're going to see the things that Jesus prophesied come about. And we need to be really, really watching and praying and not following uh, blind shepherds. Mm. And it, it is just very, very sobering. And in the Gospel of John, Jesus gives some clear-cut ways on how to tell a true shepherd from a false one. In John chapter 10 and verse 11, he said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hiring fleeth because he is a hireling. That's someone yeah. that's just doing something for... Why, why, why is a hireling the hireling? Because he's a hireling. He's just there for the money. He don't care about the sheep. And careth not for the sheep. And today... The way it is in the American evangelical church, if the wolf pays tithes, they'll make him a deacon. They'll make him an elder. That's just the way it is. Any, And I will just speak to the issue of Freemasonry, and I wish someone would prove me wrong, but I've been doing this for many, many years. And the people that are standing in the pulpits on Sunday mornings, they are nothing but hirelings. And until they prove me wrong, I will stick to that. Let them stand up against the, the Freemasonry that has ravaged the American church. Let them stand up against the rank paganism that has overtaken them assemblies. They're going to turn a blind eye. They're going to let the Freemasons operate. They're going to let them do what they do. Why? Because they are hirelings. That's why. And prove me wrong, I'd be very glad. Stand up. Stand up for the truth, and until you do, and until you'll stand up like a man of God and speak the truth without fear and tell your people the truth, you are nothing but a gutless hireling and a coward, and I rebuke you with every ounce of sincerity in me. You disgust me, you make me sick, and even more, you make God sick, and he's going to spew you out. And you probably have already had Ichabod written over the door, and you don't even know it. And, you know, they they had their perfect opportunity, perfect opportunity during this whole thing that went down to stand up and make a yeah. stand and, and grow some, grow, you know, 
grow some guts. They had the perfect opportunity yeah. to do these things. And they, what did they do? They, they cried, you know, they laid back. They, they tried to accommodate They hire. They were hirelings is what they yeah. were. They were hirelings. They, there's still places that are in fear, 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 scared of death. They should be, a, they should be more worried about living yeah. than they are scared to die, but they are worried to death because they fear for their life, which means they, or, uh, I mean, where's the, where's the faith in that? You know, well, the leader should have been telling people to repent. This is, it was a perfect opportunity. Perfect. I and mean, that's what blows my mind about yeah. it, David. It was a perfect yeah. opportunity to tell people to repent. They would have listened. They would have listened. Yeah. They did listen. When we spoke, We the yeah. people listened, right? Yeah. They could have listened, but they missed it, man. It really breaks my heart. It does. It is. It's and too it, late. It, it's, it's heartbreaking, and it also... It, it makes me angry. And if you don't have a little righteous indignation, um, if you're not mad, you're just not paying attention because this is a mess. All they can say is roll up your sleeve and take the jab. That's their advice to their flock. In uh, Jeremiah, and I'll have a trivia question here. How many times does the word pastor appear in the New Testament? The answer is zero. It does not appear even a single time in the New Testament. And in any church in North America or pretty much all over the world, they walk in and they say, well, who's the pastor? You know, and not only is the church doctrinally wrong, but it's structurally wrong. And that's another story. The word pastors, plural, appears one time in the book of Ephesians, and it is a gift and not an office. And the word of God has, and you see, there are earthly shepherds that were empowered by the heavenly shepherds. There's the good 70 and the bad 70. Now, if you read the Bible, even casually, the Father has a big problem with idolatry, you know, a big problem with it. But today, the way to build your church bigger is to sanctify idolatry. Let's have a little Christianized idolatry. We'll Christianize Halloween and all the pagan holidays, and we'll have the Freemasons set the Christmas tree up, and it'll just all be fine and dandy. This is what the word of the Lord says in Jeremiah 23. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. In Ezekiel, the 34th chapter, in verses 2 through 4, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. This evening, I am prophesying against the false shepherds in America. Judgment will begin at the house of God, and you will not escape. And I prophesy also unto all the blind sheep that are following them. If you think you can support these people and not be held accountable, there is a fire pit that is awaiting for you. The blind sheep better wake up. The, Jesus said, the, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe you with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. The diseased have ye not strengthened, neither have ye healed that which was sick, neither have ye bound up that which was broken, neither have ye brought up again that which was driven away, neither have ye sought that which was lost, but with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them. Down in verse 8 it says, As I live, saith the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey. Yeah, today the flock is a prey. People with the best of intentions, they're come into these assemblies. They're taught that the way to serve God is to Christianize paganism. It, it, there's going to be a payday. There's going to be a payday. God is real. He really hates idolatry, and God's people really do too. It's time for the sheep to start being sheep, 
or you're going to be a blinded sheep. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord as I live, saith the Lord God. Surely my flock became a prey, and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd. Neither, neither did my shepherds search for the flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Therefore, O ye shepherds, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand and cause them to cease from their feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth and that they may not be meat for them. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. The Lord himself, the good shepherd, is seeking out his sheep now. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And you cannot follow the good shepherd and follow the false shepherd at the same time. The road to hell will never wind up in heaven. It never will. It is time to follow the good shepherd and and I will just have to say, at the very least, that I believe this prophecy of the 70 shepherds in the book of, is of Enoch, it is a prophetic warning to us and one of many things that we could point to that we are indeed in the very last days. It is time for each and every one of us to seek the Lord and to put our house in order. Hmm. So true, and the, what a I don't know how, how it was to say other than what a great show, David. You got awesome, fantastic job. We are going to do a Q and A right after this on the Midnight Ride YouTube channel, which is our backup channel. Um, I'm going to ask you guys if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, go check out fojcradio.com. Check out nystv.org. Uh, we're on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Rumble. And you can check it all out there. I think you guys are on Brideon too. So we're uh, Rumble and, and NYSTV.org are the best places other than YouTube to find our stuff. But we're, you know, as far as uh, Midnight Ride goes. But we appreciate you guys listening. We're going to do something, David, we call the Pounder's Pound. You know about it. We're going to, on the count of three, you're going to like the like button with us. If you liked it, if you didn't, dislike it. And we'll tell us why you didn't like it. And we appreciate it. It helps with the algorithm. We At least that's what we're told with YouTube to get more people to view the show and uh obviously you know a show like this you don't you don't come by every day so make sure you share this out on the count of three guys one two three boom, boom. hit the like button thank you guys so much come join us over on the on the midnight ride channel uh, i got to talk to david about this first but we might have a special treat for you if we reach a hundred thousand subscribers on the midnight ride channel something that is just you guys are going to be like what so you need to go over there and subscribe <laughs> uh because we need to make it to hundred thousand if we do it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. You guys are gonna be like, I really want to see this, so I, I I'm gonna subscribe. So trust me, you you'll like it over there anyway. We got uh, shows that we re put out and we re edit, remaster, put them out. Uh, good channel. We do all our Q and As over there. So anything, David, you want to add before we go? Well, I just want to thank all of our Midnight Ride listeners. We love you. We appreciate you so very much. We could not do without your prayers and your support. Thank you so very much. You're just the best. And with that. We're going to say goodbye until next Saturday night at 10 p.m. Central on the Midnight Ride. Come on, join us for the Q&A on the Midnight Ride channel. High five and good night, everybody. We'll see you next week on the Midnight Ride. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up, rise up, 